What's going on, smart people? In the comments section, someone suggested that I make a reaction video to Mac Lethal's rap on the theory of relativity, and I haven't seen this video, but I've seen some of his other videos. I think they're really fun to watch. Now, I'm a graduate student for physics, but what this video is not going to be is it's not going to be me nitpicking at every fucking thing this guy says. That's just... It's unnecessary for someone who's trying to communicate something in a creative way. I don't know what his background is, but if it's not physics, I'm sure we'll hear tons of analogies and metaphors, also because this is a rap, but when you use the analogies, you're kind of forced to compromise explaining what things are for what things are like. And to me, I say who gives a shit as long as you're getting people interested. If he says something that's blatantly incorrect, I'll correct him, but for the most part, I'm just going to be making comments on what he has to say and expanding on it from the perspective of someone with a physics background. But I've talked enough, let's listen to this rap on the theory of relativity. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rapping oh, About just My just YouTube right into Series. It. Let's, this series is let's all about rapping about music. <laughs> this episode was... God damn it. ...that are pulled... Air of shade tree sunglasses with my time shade content like this one shade support them back okay here hey, yo, we go last week on my youtube channel i told my subscribers to pick the topic i said i'd rap about anything i got lots of answers but the most popular answer i got was rap about the theory of relativity so this okay was i'm gonna try That's to make cool. this easy to explain a lot of people treat this topic like a needle in their brain they say oh my god this stuff is so confusing well let me fix that for you baby mac lethal is my name okay look this is the universe where everything happens every moment every action every hole and every fraction every person every atom Every person that's named Adam, every galaxy, planet, star, every forwards, every backwards, the universe is made of space. Space is like a what would a what would a relativity explanation be without the literal fabric of space time? That's so funny. That means that he had to go out of his way to get one of these for this video. People get so butt hurt whenever you bring up like the fabric of space time analogy. It's like no, it's kind of an abstract concept. So you're tethering it to something that's more familiar to people. As long as you understand that all analogies have their limitations. Uh, hell yeah, whatever that helps you learn something. Fabric, it's empty, literally empty. It's a vacuum. The universe is so big that it's infinite, which means the universe is so big that you could never reach the end of it. Oh, but cool. He actually, so I was gonna, I was debating saying something about that last comment, but he says the observable universe is 93 billion light years in diameter, which is true. Anything beyond that, light doesn't have enough time to reach us because the universe is expanding. So light's moving towards you, but it's also the space itself is getting wider and more spread out, so it won't ever get to us. And whatever's beyond that, who the hell knows? But even if you could reach the end of it, it's expanding so f***ing fast that the future is a moment in the past, which... The future is a moment in the past. I think what he's saying there is how... Say you look into the night sky and you see a star or a planet, the light that's coming from it, light is not infinitely fast. It takes time to reach us. So if something is five light years away, it takes light five years to get to us. So if you see that bit of light, you're looking at something that came from it five years ago. So in a sense, you're looking into the past. Which means we not only have questions that we don't know how to answer, we have questions that we don't know how to ask. Now wait, don't let that get confusing. Just know that really everything so in existence is moving. It's always been moving, it'll always be moving, and time is a direction, a dimension, and illusion. The theory of relativity <laughs> awesome. was created by Albert Einstein, but let me make something clear to you. When you talk about the theory of relativity, you're not talking about only one theory, you're talking about two. They're special... Wow, he's actually dividing it into both special and general relativity. I did not think he was going to do that. I thought he was just going to lump them all together and just be like, things depend on your reference frame in ways that rhyme, or something like that. That's, that is awesome. Let's see how he does this. Relativity and general relativity. Both of them are amazing. Both of them need explaining. Both of them sound like they were written in an alien language. So Tenses hold up, I'm gonna say it in layman's. A special relativity has two main ideas, and I'm gonna break them down without complicated words. One, the law of physics applies to every non-accelerating person, place, or thing in the universe. It doesn't matter if you're in a moving or a parked car. It doesn't matter if it's a planet or an actual star. As long as it's moving at a constant and speed the law of physics applies to it indeed and remember what i said right. <laughs> everything is moving according to the smartest person ever isaac newton basically with with special relativity if you get an answer in one reference frame and a different answer in one re in a different reference frame 
physics says that it shouldn't matter which way you look at it. If they are the right answer, there's got to be a way to transform from one into the other. If they really are connected, that's where you get like the idea of a Lorentz transformation, uh, which I will be deriving in a future video. But yeah, that's, that's completely correct. Bro, I'm not moving. I'm right here in one place. Wrong. You're on Earth, and Earth is moving through space. Earth is moving relative to the sun, and uh, the sun is moving relative to the Earth, and uh, they're both moving relative to the galaxy, which is moving relative to the universe. Now, idea two of special relativity states the speed of light always moves at the same speed. It don't matter what... Yeah, that's true, too. So... One of the, the postulates, I guess you could say, of special relativity is, is that the speed of light doesn't give a shit of which way you look at it. It should always be C. He's using miles per second, which is 186,000 miles per second. If you're in the rest of the world, around 300 million meters per second. Uh, and because it's supposed to be constant in every single reference frame, you get weird consequences like time dilation and length contraction and things like that. Speed. It don't matter what source it's from. The light could be coming from an iPhone or coming from the sun. The light from this flashlight and the light from this lightsaber move at the exact same speed. But depending on where you're at in the universe and how fast you're moving, you might see them differently. That's cool too. So he's talking about the Doppler effect there, I think, because um, you know, yeah, all light travels at the same speed. It, it travels different speeds depending on what medium it's propagating through. Uh, like it'll be slower in water, which is why when you put a pencil in a glass of water, it diffracts a little bit because the speed of light is a little different. Um, technically, when it's uh, that's too specific, but what he's talking about is the Doppler effect. If light, if you're moving towards, or if light is moving towards you and you're moving towards it, the light will be shifted more blue. And if it is moving away from you, if an object that is giving off light is moving away from you, it'll appear more red. Uh, it's the exact same idea as when an ambulance goes by you and if it's moving towards you It's going higher pitch and when it moves away from you it goes lower pitch so there's that. This is general relativity. Uh -oh. Let's say time is a road paved with space. There's no beginning, no ending. The speed of light is the speed limit, and the faster that you move on the road, the more the road starts bending. Because the faster that an object moves, the bigger the object gets. The more it pushes space to slope. Yeah, the larger it mass, the more it physically curves space, the slower the time processes in inside of it. I think that's supposed to say progress progresses inside of it downward as time slows down and gravity gets more, gravity gets more yeah. what is that old saying uh matter tells space time how to bend curve space time tells matter how to move Dense. And that's the reason earth revolves around the sun the mass from the sun pushes down space time earth rides the curvature of the sun's gravity but if the sun was gone earth would move in a straight line so what's going on there? He's right. That's that's the one thing that gets a little dangerous with the analogy is um, you, you really do picture like a pocket, but really what changes is sort of the definition of a straight line. The definition of the shortest path sort of changes into something that's curved, and that's what gets kind of complicated with the math. So it's it's still taking the shortest path. The shortest path now, the definition of that straight line has changed because of the presence of matter. So in conclusion, space is the same thing as time. They're not separate. They're intertwined. It's a behavior and action. Um uh, there is a difference between space and time, but it's it's sort of like they're both part of one bigger thing, which is totally Movement fun. of atoms, coordinates in the universe for which things happen. You can set two stopwatches to the same time, but gravity will make them both tick. But I, I think he knew what he was trying to say. Like it's kind of it's kind of clear, right? If I were to say meet me at 4 p.m., you don't automatically know I mean at the bar. You need that additional information because they are different. They're kind of similar in that you need both of them equally to understand like the whole total problem. But they are they are different. But let's let's move back a little bit because I think I was talking through that. But if the sun was gone, Earth would move in a straight line. So in conclusion, space is the same thing as time. They're not separate. They're intertwined. It's a behavior and action. A movement of atoms, coordinates in the universe for which things happen. You can set two stopwatches to the same time, but gravity will make them both tick at different speeds. G oh, wow. He's talking about time dilation now. That's awesome. I just actually made a video about time dilation where I came up with the math behind it. Uh... Hell yeah, this video is amazing. It has to use relativity to work. It's not a hypo Time moves at different speeds all over the universe based on different gravity. 
intensities. Yeah, um, time dilation can happen two ways, using because of special relativity or general relativity. So in the presence of like a lot of mass or just things moving quickly relative to each other. So it's not just uh, general relativity. Hypothesis, it's guaranteed. Okay, I'm. And yeah, that that's true. Um, there, there's no question about it. The GPS satellites, I think he actually said that, have to calibrate themselves to account for time dilation. Which is crazy when you think about it. Something that bizarre is things that, oh, we better, oh, did you remember to account for time dilation? That the fact that clocks take at different speeds depending on how fast you're moving or how much mass is there? In the video now, this was a challenge to make. I learned a lot, I'm feeling proud. Sometimes it's not about the reason why or how. It's simply what the universe allows. Okay, that was a really good video. It was it was fun, it would keep anyone interested, but it wasn't too detailed to where you'd end up losing them. And he, everything that he explained, for the most part, was, was totally fine. I didn't really see anything that was like, whoa, dude. That is just fucking bullshit. One thing that I do want to expand on just a bit more is that whole time dilation thing because it's really confusing at first and something that a lot of people don't understand is that time dilation affects other people's clocks, right? You're never going to see your watch being time dilated. You're not going to see your second hand ticking slower. You'll be seeing someone else who's traveling fast their watch moving slower or someone who's subject to a really strong gravitational field like by a black hole or something their clock going slower uh, but it doesn't work that way for yourself you're not going to see yourself aging slower or faster and honestly i don't think he messed up the the time dilation thing at all i think that's just a point that people generally miss they think that they can make themselves age faster or slower in their own reference frame it just doesn't work that way but overall i think that this video was was great it's kind of it's interesting because i'm preaching to the choir i i make videos for people who already know that they're interested in physics whereas this guy he has over a million subscribers and those people subscribe to him because maybe they like his personality or his rapping or something like that but then he makes a video like this that goes out to a bunch of people and if it's that many people there's bound to be some of them that just think science is stupid or boring dull whatever so he makes a video like this and maybe gets a lot more people interested in physics which i'm all about i think that's awesome i can appreciate anything that tries to reel people into science but i hope that he continues to make more of those kinds of videos i think he has a knack for it actually i hope you guys enjoyed watching this one let me know in the comment section if you did and i'll see you guys there